So, yeah, if I take a second and uh, comment to, to the last question, I think that we need to uh, make a distinction in our mind between autonomous vessel and armored vessel because people tend to uh, don't separate it. I mean, autonomous, according to IMO, at least, uh, uh, autonomous, vessel, autonomous vessel, it is five level uh, stage. So uh, unmanned vessels is the last one, fifth stage. So we have a long way to go. And I think uh, at least for ocean going vessels, we are far, far, far away from it. So uh, that's my point of view. Uh, so moving on with the agenda, uh, next speaker is uh, Mr. Michalis Kajistilanou, CEO of One Network Group. And uh, the presentation is entitled Maritime Satellite Solutions, uh, the Options in the Near Future. So, Mr. Hirschstein, please. Hello, everybody. Friday afternoon, the last one. Thank you, Adoni. Um, yeah, that's right. So. Uh, I'm going to go through the options we have today or the coming options uh, in the near future. Uh, I'm going to try to do it a little bit fast. I know everybody's a little bit tired. So I start with the involvement of maritime satellite from the start back to the 80s where we had a connection at 9.6 kilobits, prime pricing at the rate of 200 to $300 per megabyte, and dial-up set up. Moving to volume-based, like the mobile GSM connectivity today, where you buy two, three gigs per month. And um, today, we're running what we call VSAT, which you can get basically between one to eight megabit uh, at a much, much lower prices. What we see in the near future, I put a range 24, 25, where you can get between 50 to 100 or 200 um, megabits at much lower prices per megabyte. I would like also to, 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 to discuss a little bit the satellite users of today. The, there are beyond maritime, there's many other sectors uh, using satellite today. Uh, the biggest one is domestic internet, aviation. Aviation is a big one uh, as well. Um, you may appreciate a flight of one and a half hour carried 200 people where uh, a voyage of seven days, 22 crew members. So there is a much bigger users sectors than maritime. Maritime is estimated at the range of 8% of the total capacity. Um, we see also things that are affecting the maritime capacity is the wars, right? We, we see capacity moving towards government as well these days and really affecting us if I focus a little bit on the maritime and split the, the sectors, the biggest one is Mercan. You see on this uh, chart here, I split between two access, global and regional sailing, low and high bandwidth. At the high end is passenger vessels, rigs, super yachts, uh, Mercan shipping, it's starting from low bandwidth um, needs to higher. If I focus a little bit on the options we're having today, if I split into three categories, I can say entry, standard, and enhance, where the entry is a very basic one. Most of the people subscribe at the entry these days. Uh, standard, which are looking for have a gig in uh, half a terabyte, sorry, and one terabyte for the enhanced packages. 
um, what we experience today, users subscribing for low end, but their needs are much higher. Uh, and this is, is clearly the indication that there is a requirement, heavy requirement for more bandwidth. I will repeat a little bit the information the previous presented uh, gave, just to give a little bit the different constellation you have today is a geo, which is at the range of uh, 36 kilomiles from the earth. We have the Mio and the Leo, which is the interesting constellations are coming in the near future, which up to 2,000 miles uh, from uh, the Earth. And of course, we have Hyleptical, which is specific constellation uh, to cover poles. If I put the, if I, if, if, if I look a little bit the Leo constellations to compare, we have the, at least those I focus and I look into recently, they make uh, announcements is one web, uh, which is a 600 satellites, two thirds already launched. Uh, they announced that they're gonna focus on maritime as well. We see global coverage at the range of uh, 2024. Starling, which is announced they can go up to 30, 40,000 here before. Satellites close to 2,500 2, already uh, launched. And recently they announced beyond the terrestrial solutions, they're gonna focus on maritime. I see a global coverage around 23, 24. Telesat, which is coming a little bit later, um, which planning to launch around 300 satellites and they're gonna focus on maritime. Uh, sorry, Joe, I didn't mention Rivada here. I wasn't too much aware of the solution, uh, but what you said before is quite interesting. We're gonna look at that for sure. Um, Amazon already made some announcements. They didn't start launching yet, uh, but they announced a, a constellation of 3,000 satellites or something. Uh, but what I see coming, at least in the near future, is a kind of a hybrid. A hybrid between Geo, Leo, and the LT 5G solutions. Um, this is what I see. I agree with David before that this is likely to be the, a good scenario, at least for the next three to four years. I try to compare the, the main Leo are coming, launching, and they're gonna come into service soon. And I try to put, to compare capacity and latency, right? Just to see where they stand. One web, one web is planning to give a good capacity, over 100 uh, megabit. Uh, committed uh, rates at the range of one tenth, so 10%, uh, and low latency at the range of 70 milliseconds. Then we have Viasat and Starling, I think very much are gonna cover globally pretty much the same timing. I would say um, Viasat with a geo solution, they're gonna have also a good capacity a little bit more committed rates than uh, one web, but very high latency, right? At the range of 500 milliseconds. Starling, from what I know so far, is purely um, best effort. They didn't announce any possibility for CIR, of course, very low um, latency. Somewhere along this line, we tell us that this Rivada as well. Uh, the difference here, what we're gonna see for Rivada, if I understand well from uh, David, they're gonna have, which is quite interesting to me, a lot of committed rate. Telesat is coming 
um, with a good capacity, fairly good committed rates, and low um, uh, low latency. Sorry. I'm trying to show a couple of uh, trials we do at the moment uh, for uh, our fleet. I'm coming with a, a hybrid solution, which is a VSAT with a Leo, uh, which basically you see the green is a VSAT solution and the brown is a Leo. When you see the spike, if I focus a little bit more, we see when the Leo pickups you see bandwidth from one megabit up to 55. And interesting to also see the latency from 600 milliseconds down to around 40, 45, if I read well. Uh, this is what, uh, this is a vessel running uh, in our fleet and it's quite interesting. This is what I call a hybrid and it's interesting to to, 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 to integrate the two solutions together. I'm also gonna show um, another trial for with a 4G solution, LTE, which we're running again a VSAT, uh, and uh, running the VSAT at one megabit and jump to seven in this case, uh, when peaks um, LTE network. What we see for uh, LT, 4G and 5G, we see 40 to 100 megabits in Europe, US regions uh, in Asia, and we see a little bit less in uh, Africa regions. Just to conclude, we see many options coming, right? Uh, many operators are coming in the near future. The question is, who will survive? I don't believe everyone will survive, especially the Leos. Uh, there's a huge investment for them. They need to return the investment. So to me, to conclude, the best blend will survive, which it is coverage, broadband capacity, and committed rates, latency. Latency for me is not the most important. It is important, but it's most important. Price, the value, value added services, right? Support and an integrator. So this, it's in my opinion, will, the one offering the best blend will, um, will, will survive. That's it for me. Thank you for the informative presentation. Do you have any questions? That's not the case. So thank you very much. Thank uh, you. We move forward.